Right, we are off. Oh my goodness, look at you two. There's thousands of fleas on this poor dog. I'm breaking my heart, mate. Right now, there are dogs that need help. Can't stay like that. She's scratching all the time. And there are heroes that are dedicated to saving them. That dog cannot stay in the house. He's certainly a little fighter, this one. Transforming their lives. Let's get a clip of the hog, please. Without the surgery, she may not make it through this year. It really is going to be a lifesaver for her. Finding them forever homes. Sit. That's how you get the dog you need. So. Yep, we needed him. The precious boy. And giving our four-legged best friends a second chance makes it all worthwhile. And to see them like this is just amazing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> they are the dog rescuers. I love my dog. <laughs> Every year, the charity finds thousands of new homes for dogs just like Marley here. And staff at centres just like South Godston work 365 days a year, giving many dogs that didn't have a good start in life a bright future. But, as you're about to see, there's a huge amount of work that goes into making that possible. All right, Marley, I'm looking after you today. I think it is time for your walk. Or is it my walk? Let's see. Come on. Coming up, two dog de Bordeaux brothers get the help they so desperately need. Oh, my goodness, look at you two. Look how skinny you two are. There's no excuse, is there? Olive, the heavily matted Shih Tzu's incredible story of survival. She had terrible infections in her eyes and her ears. The fact someone could just leave her in that state, it, it really upset me. Come on, everybody, let's go. And it's love at first sight for Anthony Joins with one rescue dog. This is Peppa. She's beautiful, isn't she? I'd re her in a heartbeat if I could. Hi, yeah, I'm just waiting for a job to come through on my PDA, but I'm just wondering if you've got the details now. Right, OK, just resend it and I'll go and have a look. It's a freezing morning in Liverpool, and veteran inspector Helen Smith is responding to a call about two abandoned dogs called Turner and Hooch. Right now, we're going to a property where the um, lady who used to live there has been evicted. We've had a call from the landlord to say she's not been there for about two weeks, and there are two large dogs in the back garden. Um, as far as he knows, the dogs haven't been fed. No one's been going to them. If they've not been fed for two weeks and they've not had anything, um, I'd expect them to be pretty thin. If they've not had water, then uh, I'm not expecting them to be alive. Preparing for the worst, Helen's called on animal welfare officer Matt Brown. Hello. Hello. <coughs> Thankfully, there are signs of life. Are they dumped a board? Yeah, two of them. Oh, no. <coughs> OK, right, I think the other side. Turner and Hooch, aren't Turner and Hooch, that's what they're called. Once in the garden, it's obvious Turner and Hooch are in very poor condition. Oh, my goodness, look at you two. Look how skinny you two are. There's no excuse, is there? Come on, Come on, darling. The brothers should be powerful, muscular dogs, but instead they're practically skin and bone. Come on, sweetheart. Are you going to be friendly? Turn there, Hooch. Come on. Oh, they're terrified. Come on, sweetheart. It's OK. You don't want to stay here. Come on. Come on. There's no shelter. Think how cold it's been. It's freezing, isn't it? It's like zero degrees. If they've been out here for two weeks, they've probably lost the body weight as well from trying to keep warm. They've nowhere to lie that's dry. 
They've got no bowls, water, no food. It's just disgusting, isn't it? They wouldn't survive the winter like that. And they're terrified. Helen and Matt must approach carefully to keep Turner and Hooch as calm as possible. He's thinking about it. He is. He's just a bit scared. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Come on, Come on. Come on. Can you turn the bleed? Come on, sweetheart. Hello. Hello. I'll get that one. Hey, yeah. All those scars on his yeah, head as well. Yeah, it's the top of his head. It's terrible scars. They've been fighting over food, possibly. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. Now, Matt needs to get anxious Hooch safely on a lead. Look, come on. Hello. Come on. We've got the brother. He's fine, look. Come on, sweetheart, eh? You all right, Matt? Yeah, Come yeah. on, oh, no, good boy. Got a bit of a on, That's it. There you go. We're getting out of here, guys. Got a bit of a spirit on, then. Come, Come on. on, mate. Yeah. We've got a nice little bed for you. Mm. Some food. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. We'll take them to the vet and have a proper look at them, and give them some nice food and get them warm. Boy, you only just fit. You only just fit. It's all right. You're a good boy. Weight loss can be a symptom of an underlying illness. Fingers crossed, it's just food these two need. All right, next stop is the vets. Back in the northwest, abandoned brothers Turner and Hooch have been taken to Salford Animal Hospital. They're both desperately underweight. Are you all right? I'll get mine out. Helen needs to make sure there's no underlying medical reason for their condition. Come on then, your brother's here. Come on. Here's your bro. Come on. Here's your bro. You're looking for food. First up, for vet Vanessa Whitfield, is the bigger of the two brothers. So which is this one? This is Hooch. The body condition score is very, very poor. Skull prominence is there, all his spinal prominence, his ribs, his shoulders, these are his, his shoulders here, clearly visible, and his hip bones are clearly, clearly visible. We mark them out of nine, where nine is the fattest dog you've ever seen and one is, is very, very, very thin to emaciation, and I think we can say he's and one. He's lost a lot of muscle mass. And Turner's condition isn't much better. Hello. I think we're a little bit more forthcoming than your friend. Okay, good dog. He's a smaller dog. He's not actually as thin, as quite as thin as the other one. Right. Um, reasonable. I mean, he's verging on a one. Yeah, this one, again, is, is considerably underweight. How long do you think it would take for dogs to um, receive no food at all to no get If they receive condition? no food at all, they'd be coming to this state within um, 10 to 14 days. Mm -hmm. But if they're given small amounts of food, it can take from weeks even to a couple of months. Depends on the amount of food, but complete starvation, the dog's only dead within two weeks. Right. It sounds as though Helen rescued them just in time. You've been very good. Gentle giants, haven't you? But before these two get a much-deserved meal, Vanessa needs to take a blood sample to make sure it's only a lack of food that's causing their weight loss. Oh, we do get stressful. Oh, dear. All right, lad. Although Hooch isn't so convinced. <laughs> OK, OK. Oh, what are you doing? Where are you off to? You mean now he's only sausage? You can't be like that. <laughs> he's sulking. Not surprised. What a traumatic day for him. It's terrible. Give him some food in a minute. <laughs> he's just so fed up with this. Yeah. Come on then, let's get that neck up. Oh, and we're all done. Come on then. Good lad. 
Now for something he will enjoy. Dinner time. Are you ready? Because this, this is going to go at once. <laughs> going to grab, grab me out of my hand. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Quick, quick, quick. What's this? Ooh, lovely. What's that? <laughs> Yeah, I think we can turn this over hungry, can't we? <laughs> Starving! Oh. You can only give him a small amount of food because if he has been truly starved for a number of days, if you give them too much food, it can make them really, really ill. Yeah. He's just yeah. going to be on a third of a tin six times a day. Six times a day. Yeah, and then right. we'll put him onto the puppy complete four times daily then. <laughs> and you're done. Hooch! <laughs> hey. Oh, that nice? Don't think the bowl's edible, Hooch. With Turner's bloods also taken, okay. he gets the chow down too. Is he ready for his lunch? Yeah, he's ready. There you go. There you go. A little bit more refined than his brother. A little bit, yeah, <laughs> just a tad. A bit more etiquette. Yeah. Um, the most likely explanation is they haven't been given enough food, you know, but we want to rule out there's not an underlying disease. So that's why we're doing the tests, and then we're going to put them on a careful refeeding programme. I bet you they'll be better in two to three weeks. Now that Turner and Hooch are safe, Helen can focus on tracking down their owner and find out why they were left a waste away. Bye-bye. As far as I'm concerned at the minute, there's no excuse to leave your dogs in that state with, with nothing. I mean, they didn't even have the fundamental water or a, a bed. You know, it's, uh, there's no excuse at the minute for me. The vets have already said they'll support a Section 9 offence, which means that the needs haven't been met. And then we'll just take it from there and we'll see what our prosecutions department say. Turner and Hooch will be fed little and often whilst they're nursed back to health. And with plenty of TLC, Helen is convinced that the brothers will blossom. They're beautiful, beautiful temperament. To go through what they've gone today, having been prodded and poked and starving and everything, and they've not once shown any sign of aggression. Good boy. They'll just be amazing, amazing pets. Go to sleep tonight knowing that they're warm and they're never going to be hungry again. Yes, this way. Let's, no. My arm needs to be in my socket. We'll be back with Turner and Hooch later to find out if they can pile on the pounds. They certainly need to. And once they get settled into their new digs, another dog is in need of help. Right, Marley. Good morning, you dogs are in at the RSPCA. Can I take your name, please? And when did you last see the dog? Over in Walthamstow, East London, Inspector Becky Bedson is responding to a vague call about a dog stranded on an island in a flood channel. A bit worried about it. It has been really, really cold. It was a very frosty morning, um, and they think the dog's been there all night, so we're a little bit worried about it. It's the local council's responsibility to find and collect strays. Of course it's permit holders only. But if the RSPCA are worried about a dog's welfare, they'll step in. Monday to Friday, 8 to 6.30, two hours. We're going to have to go on a little adventure, I think, to find this dog. Doing this job, you never know what you're going to find. I mean, I've been called to teddy bears um, on the side of the road. You're aware of the fact that it could be anything, so it could turn into a wild goose chase. That's a swan. Stick to dogs. The corner was on a train when the dog was spotted, so they were unable to give an exact location. I can't see any sort of island or anything that a dog could be stuck on. I don't know if I'm looking in the wrong place. Can't see there's an island anywhere around here. It's the middle of winter, and if a dog is stranded, wet and cold, hypothermia could set in. Uh... Already, something's in Becky's way. OK. <laughs> hmm. I'm going to give the, these people a call, see if they can let me in. Oh, hi, yeah. Calling from the RSPCA. We've had a call to say that there's a dog stranded on an island in the river, river somewhere, but I can't get access to the river because it's, um, the gates are padlocked, and I wondered how I can get in to have a look. Thank you. OK. 
Thankfully, someone from the Environment Agency is nearby to let Becky in. But even if there is a dog on this stretch of water, finding it isn't going to be easy. I can have a little look up and down the river, but I can't really see that there's any dry land for it to be standing on, so I'm not really sure what the call has seen, to be honest. Mm. See, it could have been standing on there, couldn't it? With sketchy directions and no sign of a dog, Becky is starting to lose hope. It was 9 o'clock this morning, so it was a while ago. And chances are, it's not there anymore. I mean, that's dry there, isn't it? But it's really shallow here. It's just... But just as she's about to give up, she spots something. There. They're definitely dog footprints, they are. Well, there's evidence to say it was here. When you know that there's definitely a dog that needs help, it becomes a serious, potentially dangerous situation. It's like a, a switch is flipped in your mind. Everything that you do then from that point on is to find that dog. You're not going to leave it. You're going to get it out one way or another. We'll be back with Becky on the trail of this missing mutt soon. But for now, we're heading up to Merseyside, where Inspector Anthony joins is following up on a job a colleague was called to a few weeks ago. Apparently, the dog was underweight, obviously not to the point where it needed immediate intervention. We just go back and see what we find. You've got to hope for the dog's welfare, that the person's increased the feed and the dog's improved in condition. If the dog's condition is still poor, Anthony may have no option but to propose removing it. My colleague was here, wasn't she, a few weeks ago? Can I come in? The dog is a one-year-old Dalmatian called Pepper and looks in good enough shape. She looks not too bad. But the owner fears she can't give her everything she needs. They're just so demanding, aren't they? So have you, have you really struggled to sort of get her long walks and stuff? A fully grown dog like Pepper needs at least an hour's walk a day, which she's not getting. So the owner agrees to sign her over. Take care, all right? All right. Come on, then, buddy. Let's go. And this pepped-up Dalmatian has already won Anthony over. This is Pepper. She's beautiful, isn't she? She's still a little bit lean, but she's followed the advice and she's put weight on the dog. She's struggling, really. She's got a young child and another one on the way, so she's put the dog's welfare first. It's on to pastures new for Pepper, um, which, and she'll be absolutely fine. I mean, look at her. I'd re her in a heartbeat if I could, if my dog would accept her. Next challenge is to get her into the kennel, because I don't think she's going to want to go in. I don't think she's ever been in a car before. I've never picked one up, to be honest. She's absolutely stunning, though. Aren't you? Aren't you? Yes, you are. So Pepper's got an admirer in Anthony, and could it be she thinks he's a bit of all right, too? Oh, that's disgusting. Her hero sweeps her off her feet. Here we go. Here we go. It's okay, it's okay. He's whisking her off to the local animal centre. Sometimes you pick up a dog and you think, oh, would she fit in my house? <laughs> Just thinking, oh God, would, would Bella accept her? But I don't think my Bella would. But I think she'll make somebody, somebody who's so lucky to have her. I'm going to speak to the animal centre manager quickly. At the centre, word soon spreads about the latest arrival. What is it? It's unbelievable. Honestly, she's beautiful. Don't say that. <laughs> no, no. <gasps> oh, my God. Hi. Hello. Oh, hello. Oh. Hi. Hi, Codin. Oh, I'll take your own. I'm going to need her own. <laughs> I'll shift fly out. 
and Pepper looks happy to be the centre of attention. Well, oh, that's such an army of people bringing a dog in with me. Before she goes to kennels, Anthony takes her for a much-needed run around. Hopefully, we'll find her a family really quickly that just want to adore her, really, and, and take her for long walks. She's a she's an amazing, amazing dog. She's just just got a lovely temperament. Go on, go on. Dalmatians are born white. Their spots only appear three to four weeks later. What? Huh? Oh, well done. And like all dogs, without the right care and training, they can also be rather a handful. Go on. <laughs> so now she's at the centre, Peppa will be getting more of the stimulation she needs. Come on, sis. We've got in at the right time before problems are arisen, when there, when there probably would have been a problem further down the line. So it's nice. It's quite, it's quite refreshing, actually. Oh, constantly getting covered in slobber. Once Pepper's been chipped, spayed and vaccinated, she'll be ready to find her forever home, which shouldn't take long. Oh, yes. That's really good, that was. Beautiful dog. Right, it's going to cool down a bit. It's going to cool down. Come on. We'll catch up with Dalmatian Pepper later. Also coming up... An incredible tale of survival for Olive, a heavily matted Shih Tzu. She just looks a complete state. I haven't seen a dog look that bad and still be alive. And the pressure's on for Inspector Becky Bedson to find a missing dog. The um, Environment Agency doesn't seem to think he's got anywhere to get out, so it should still be there. So hopefully we're going to find him. In January 2016, Inspector Steph Law was involved in a particularly upsetting case. I got a phone call from Southridge Animal Centre saying that a dog had been brought into them by a member of public and that the dog was in a complete state. Left to fend for herself, Olive, a little shih tzu, was found behind a pile of bricks on a building site in Hemel Hempstead. When I saw Olive um, for the first time, I was really, really upset. Her coat was really badly matted, and she had terrible infections in her eyes and her ears. She was obviously in a lot of pain. She was already on uh, quite a high dose of morphine and antibiotics, and she was just totally unresponsive. The vet needed to sedate Olive to examine her, and it was only when her fur was clipped that the full extent of her injuries was revealed. After Olive was shaved, you could see how badly infected her skin was. She had massive swellings around her head and her neck. Her eyes were so badly swollen. She just looks a complete state. I haven't seen a dog look that bad and still be alive, to be honest. I just felt really, really sorry for her. And the fact someone could just leave her in that state, it, it really upset me. Olive needed a course of antibiotics to treat the painful abscesses on her face and neck, as well as for a severe ear infection and nasty eye ulcers. While she recovered, a nurse from the veterinary clinic fostered her. Fast forward four months... Come on! ..and Olive's foster home has become her forever home. Vet nurse Emily Brown couldn't part with her and has given this two-year-old cutie a new name, Betty. She looks like a little old lady, so we just wanted to give her, no offence to any Bettys out there, but we just wanted to give her a little old lady name, so we called her Betty. For Emily, it was love at first sight, despite Betty not looking her best. She was just broken. She just seemed exhausted, the things she must have gone through. And I just knew she had to come home with me. She was really timid and quiet and really fragile. And then slowly over time, you could see her character coming back. She was just starting to trust us all more. But yeah, once her eyes were better, she was a whole new dog. <laughs> and it seems Emily has a habit of taking her work home with her. I rescue a lot of animals. We've got five cats, 
and two ferrets as well. So Betty's got herself a ready-made family, including a new big brother, 15-year-old Shih Tzu Cross, Benji. Betty is obsessed with Benji. She absolutely loves Benji. If they're apart for a long time, Betty gets really upset. But they're never apart for too long, which is very sweet. And Benji must be delighted to have a new little sister to play with. At first, when they first start playing, Benji's really up for it. And he's, like, trying to tackle her back, but then he just tires out quicker, and then she wins every time. Right. Round two. She's really happy now, cos she's always got someone with her. Um, and she's snoring. <laughs> that poor old chap must be exhausted after all that wrestling. But Betty's still full of life. Sit. Oh. <laughs> Good girl. She's um, really sassy and she's got such a cute personality. Yeah. <laughs> She's just perfect. I don't know how anybody could have treated her the way they did. She's just incredible. <laughs> the person who dumped Betty has never been traced, but with a loving new home, Betty has landed on her feet. On her side. Back in East London, Inspector Becky Bedson is on the hunt for a missing dog. They're definitely dog footprints, they are. With fresh tracks to follow, she's joining the Environment Agency to drive along the Flood Relief Channel. Hopefully we'll get a really good view, because the problem where we were walking is you can't really see directly off the bank. So it'd be really good to be sort of in the middle of the river to be able to see. The dog's definitely been there, because we can see its footprints, and the um, Environment Agency doesn't seem to think he's got anywhere to get out, so it should still be there. So hopefully we're going to find him. It's been four hours since the dog was spotted. If it's been stranded in the freezing water overnight, it could have developed hypothermia. How far down are we now then from where we were? Come on. <coughs> when you know there's a dog that needs help and the situation is potentially quite dangerous, you start to get a bit apprehensive. Your blood starts pumping and it can be quite nerve wracking. You never know what you're going to find. The anticipation sort of builds, and you, then you start to think, you know, if I got everything I need, how am I going to rescue this dog? Oh, there it is. There, straight ahead. Quite well, looks quite distressed. King, an adult German Shepherd security dog got lost and stranded during the night. And a perilous rescue attempt is underway by the men he works with. There's some people are, um, obviously trying to help it out of the river at the minute. With such high walls, it's easy to see how he got trapped. How deep is the water? It's about two, three inches. So I can walk in it with my wellies. Yeah. <laughs> Poor King has been through a terrible ordeal. Lost and alone, he must have thought he'd never be rescued. The dog's very, very frightened. These people know it, so I'm just going to get one of them to come down and try and put the lead on for me so that we can take it. It's, apparently it's friendly, but it's, it's very distressed, so... Come on, it's OK. Can you put the lead on? Hey, good boy. Hey, hi. Come on. He's fine. He's a bit stressed, a bit wet and cold, but he's super friendly, so I'm, I'm pleased. We'll bring him up the river. Yes, I'm just going to walk him out because he's a bit big and he's a bit stressed, and I don't really want to have to try and manhandle him into a van. So I'm just going to walk him up. It's just there. Come on. Becky's taking the dog friendly route home. When you've done a successful rescue, it's the best feeling in the world. Good boy. You're doing good. It's just great. It puts you on cloud nine. You know, you skip home that day and, and feel like you've done a great job, so it's brilliant. Up, up, up. Good boy. He's a lovely dog. He's quite friendly, but 
super scared, so I don't know how long he's been down there for, but he's cut his paws, trying to jump out. Luckily, there's only a couple of inches of water. If it had been any deeper, he, you know, could have been really serious for him. That rescue was one in a lifetime. I mean, I'll never, ever forget it. It was, there were so many ways it could have gone, and it just went perfectly. So it was, yeah, it was one of the best things I've done as an inspector. If your dog gets lost, your chances of being reunited are greatly improved if they're microchipped, and it's now a legal requirement. So I'm meeting animal care assistant Lily Gallup to find out more. So, Lily, tell me about a microchip. How does it work? This is an example of what they look like. Oh, OK. So they're, ti they're tiny, weeny things. Let's have a look at that. Ooh. <laughs> it's done with a microchip gun, so you just put a needle on the end there and then we have to pop it in under their skin. And they don't even know they've got it in. Mm. You don't even know you've got it in. <laughs> and we use a scanner just to make sure that it's stayed in correctly. So how do I find that? So if you press this, that this side little button. Bit, yeah, and usually it's on the back of their neck. It can sometimes be in their legs, so it's always important to scan their whole body. Where's your chip gone? Try taking your finger off. Have you got your finger down? Yeah, try... Yeah. If you just press it once, then try scan sort of lower. I'm not very good with technology. <laughs> there you go. There. Oh, I found you. It's there. <laughs> it's there. I've got your number. There's a lot of noughts in it. You are chipped. I'm ready to find a home. Well, Marley, these are a brilliant idea. Let me just... I'm going to go and get three of these for my kids. Thanks, Lily. Thank you. Take Bye. care. Bye. Come on, everybody. Let's go. Earlier, Inspector Anthony Joins rescued Dalmatian Pepper. It's Pepper. She's beautiful, isn't she? Her owner couldn't cope with the responsibilities a dog brings, so signed her over for rehoming. Hopefully, we'll find her a family really quickly that just want to adore her, really, and, and take her for long walks. Now, six months on, Anthony's hopes have become reality. She's found her forever home with retired couple Jane and Richard Jones. But it nearly didn't happen. Jane said I couldn't have another dog because it would outlive me. <laughs> you can laugh, but that's what you said. <laughs> but Jane had a good reason for changing her mind. I knew we had to get a dog to, to get him moving, basically. Went to the RSPCA in Wallasey and we walked in and they said, Oh, you're out of luck. We've had a good week. They've all gone except for that one in there. Pepper turned out to be their one and only. I saw her, fell in love with her straight away. Jane was filling in the form and I'm saying, Quick, 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 I'm scared somebody was going to walk in the door and beat us to it. <laughs> Instant love. Couldn't wait to get her, get her home and get to know her. She's very loving, she's very intelligent, and she's well behaved, isn't she? If you, she apart she, from the apple pie. Apart from the apple pie that she helped herself off the worktop. Well, and that was his fault because he left it near the edge. <laughs> <laughs> Something tells me Pepper is the apple of their eyes. She doesn't answer back. I can tell her anything and she doesn't tell me off. <laughs> <laughs> No idea what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Pepper now gets them out and about. Hup and sit. And they've even joined a doggy walking group. Which is always a social occasion. Hiya. Hi. Hello, Keith. Hello, Keith. Keith. Hello, Keith. Yes, Pepper's mates include Keith, the Golden Lab, and Arnie, the Poodle, as well as Jake, Hetty, Betty, Tatty, the Spaniel. Oh, and we mustn't forget Bon Bon, the Chihuahua. And they and their humans all get on famously. <laughs> when Pepper was rescued, she wasn't getting anywhere near the amount of exercise she needed. But that's all changed. Come on, Pep. Come on, Peppy. Oh, they need a lot of exercise. She certainly does. You never feel as though you've worn her out. She's ready to go again any time. The thing that Pepper loves more than anything is to socialise with other dogs. 
And with the group, there's always at least one that she can tear around and enjoy. Even the littlest of them will have a go. Bon Bon's chasing up. She's such a happy, happy dog. Who's my baby? Who's my baby? Peppa. For Pepper and her owners, it's a new and happy life. She's, she's just perfect in every way. I just can't fault her. She's exactly what we needed. It's almost as if she's saying, this is my second chance. I'm not going to screw this one up. Because she's been so brilliant. She really has. Terrific dog. Coming up, we catch up with Boney brothers Turner and Hooch to find out how their recovery is going. Have they managed to pile on the pounds? When I first saw them in the garden, they were just so skinny. Hopefully they'll have improved now. And have you got a dog-shaped hole in your life? Well, stick around, because we might have the perfect one for you. Oh my goodness, look at you two. Look how skinny you two are. Earlier, Inspector Helen Smith rescued two painfully thin dog to Bordeaux, Turner and Hooch. We're getting out of here, guys. Come on. Their ravenous appetites suggested it was malnutrition causing their poor condition. Starving. <laughs> but just to make sure, vet Vanessa Whitfield took blood samples. But I want to rule out there's not an underlying disease. That was eight weeks ago, and today Helen is on her way to see how they're getting on. Really looking forward to seeing Turner and Hooch. When I first saw them in the garden, they were just so skinny. Hopefully they'll have improved now. Helen's been unable to track down Turner and Hooch's owner, but since they've been rescued, they've been staying at Halewood Animal Centre in Liverpool. Helen's arrived just in time for one of Turner's daily walks. Oh, my God! Come here! Hello! Hello, Turner! Look at you! You look amazing! And all your ribs have disappeared, which is fab. <laughs> he's fabulous. You look amazing. God, he's like a different dog. And he's obviously put loads of weight on, so obviously the feeding's worked. That's fantastic. And he's much calmer now. Animal care assistant Karen Bohanna has been looking after Turner. He just needs a little bit of affection, and I think he'll be a nice, well-rounded pet, yeah. Yeah. Do you take regular weigh-ins? Yes, twice a week. Oh, right, OK. So every, every three to four days. Okay. So shall we go and weigh him and find out how much he's put on since when I brought him in? Yeah, we can go weigh him. The blood test confirmed that Turner and Hooch were simply underfed, so they've been put on a special diet, which includes a high-protein puppy food to help Maybe. bulk them up. Come on, then, let's see how much you weigh now. And it seems to have done the job. <laughs> Turner was just over 30 kilos when Helen rescued him. How about now? 41. 41 kilograms. Wow. God, 11 kilos. Good lad. Turner looks terrific, but how's Hooch getting on? I'll get Hooch because oh, yeah, he needs way next to me. Okay, him. fabulous. Okay. Go back, Turner. Good okay. boy. Come on, sweetheart. Hooch, the bigger of the brothers, was even thinner. Um, the body condition score is very, very poor. He's lost a lot of muscle mass. Now he's Hooch the Hulk. Oh my goodness, look at you! <laughs> Oh, he's massive! <laughs> you are massive! Boy. I can't believe the difference in him. He, you could see every single rib when, yeah. when I brought him in, and now he's just... I'd love to see how much weight he put on. Hooch was around 40 kilos when he was rescued. 55 kilograms. 55 kilograms now. Oh, my goodness me. Good lad. That is loads of weight, isn't it? Should we go for a walk, Hooch? Should we go for a walk? Hooch was so emaciated that some of the muscle on his legs wasted away, and it's a gradual process to build it back up. 
at the moment, we've got him on uh, three small walks a day. It's about giving him the exercise, but not letting him overstrain it. Yeah. And it will build up on its own. These walks seem to be doing him well. Yeah, and, and he loves exercise. time out on the field, yeah. Yeah. Should we let him off and yeah. let him have a run around? He's not quite Arnie yet. Go on, then. Go and have a run. run. But the big chap hasn't forgotten how to have a good time. Hitch! Hitch! Come in. <laughs> He's not, he's just a gentle giant, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, you nearly knocked me over. You nearly knocked me over. What are you doing? Have we tired you out? <laughs> yeah, oh, it's time for a nap. He's snoring. <laughs> Shall we go? Come on, then. It's fantastic seeing Turner and Hooch. They have made such an improvement. They're absolutely fantastic. I'm really, really, really pleased. And their miraculous recovery is all thanks to Karen and the team at Howlwood Animal Centre. Bravo. As you've seen in the programme, many rescue dogs don't have the best start in life, but that doesn't mean that they can't make incredible pets. The RSPCA care for thousands of them, and there's often lots of work that needs to be done to get them ready for rehoming. And here's just one of the wonderful dogs they've been looking after. Come on. This is Dolly. She's an eight-year-old Staffy. She has been in RSPCA label and care for six months now, and she's looking for a new home. Good girl. Good girly. If I had to describe Dolly in three words, I'd say she's silly, lovable and energetic. She just loves rolling on her back, making her funny little noises. You lovely girl, aren't you? You go all silly, don't you? Good girl. She loves going over the jumps, like that. She's so smart, she wants to learn new things. Good girl. Good girlie. Dolly's looking for a home as the only pet, so she gets all the love and attention. It's really hard to understand why Dolly's been overlooked for so long. Some people would prefer to have a younger dog, but she is full of beans. She's amazing. <laughs> She's absolutely lovely. You've got to come and meet her. So, if you're looking for a four-legged best friend in your life, remember to make your local rescue centre your first stop, where you'll find plenty of deserving candidates desperate to brighten up your home. Next time on The Dog Rescuers. Come on then, you old man. Come on. The amazing transformation of flea-infested Ben. There's thousands of fleas on this poor dog. His skin is literally crawling. Let's get a clip of help, please. Please. <laughs> You are so good. Molly, the tiny terrier, needs surgery to fix her broken heart. Without the surgery, there's a chance that, you know, she may not make it through this year, so uh, it really is going to be a lifesaver for her. And Bichon frees Chesney's owners face a big challenge if they want to keep him. At the moment, it's not suitable for the animals to stay. We will go and battle them, won't we? If you can clear up. <laughs> Right, we are off. Oh, my goodness, look at you two. There's thousands of fleas on this poor dog. <laughs> Breaking my heart, mate. Right now, there are dogs that need help. I can't stay like that. She's scratching all the time. And there are heroes that are dedicated to saving them. That dog cannot stay in the house. He's certainly a little fighter, this one. Transforming their lives. Let's get the clippers out, please. Without the surgery, she may not make it through this year. It really is going to be a lifesaver for her. Finding them forever homes. Sit. Oh. I say you get the dog you need. So. Yep, we needed him. My precious boy. And giving our four-legged best friends a second chance makes it all worthwhile. To see them like this is just amazing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> they are the dog rescuers. I look right out. <laughs>
for his food, his water, his exercise and shelter, and with lots of affection. But some people can't or won't commit to this, and that's when inspectors need to step in. Another one. He's had 52 now, I think I should stop. Coming up, how thin is that doggy in the window? Rookie Inspector Kate Parker comes to the rescue. I've seen your dog. The state of your dog is not on. Frustration for veteran inspector Sarah Gardner. Can Ruby's owners step up to the plate? Ruby, she should have finished her treatment by now. You've got to take that responsibility. Yeah. You, you've got to do it. Good girl. And Ellie, the dog de Bordeaux, is saved after shocking treatment from her owner. Hearing it scream and him chasing it, it's just awful. It just makes me feel sick and really angry. But first... I'm not sure what car we're going. We will go this way, because I don't know what's up there. We're in the West Midlands with Inspector Kate Parker. She used to work for the police force before joining the charity two years ago. She's on her way to investigate an alleged abandonment. Hey, fella. First impression is that the dog's in the window. It is thin. You can see the spine sort of coming all along the top and onto his onto his tail as well. Poor chap. As well as looking skinny, he's home alone. Dogs are social animals. They need company. So to see an animal that's left by themselves for long periods of time is heartbreaking. Just looking around the back, you can see into the kitchen from the garden. There's an empty bowl down, so I don't know whether there's been food or water recently for it, but looking at the state of it, probably not. So we'll see if we can find out who's looking after it and uh, let's see if we can get the dog out. Kate's managed to track down the owner of the dog called Max. Yeah, I'm just outside your house now, OK? And I've seen your dog. The state of your dog is, is, is not on, OK? It's far too thin. His bones are sticking out of his back. So this needs sorting today. The owner says she hasn't fed Max today because she's away on a course. I appreciate that it's quite difficult with your work and training course, but that dog cannot stay in the house. If I sort of feel that actually he needs to see a vet for, for an opinion on whether he's suffering, then we'll go from there. But at the minute, I need you to come here so I can have a proper look at him. The owner agrees to come back to the house. It sounds like she's in a bit of an awkward situation with work and with her home life and things like that, which I completely empathise with, I really do. But looking at the dog, it's clearly not having its needs met, really, which there's no excuse for that. So we'll see what she says um, and go from there. There's an hour's wait before Kate's finally able to get a good look at two-year-old Max. Hello, fella. Why is he so thin? His spine's sticking out, and so are his hips. And that, to me, you know, in the law, really, his needs haven't been met in the basic sense that he's not been fed. Do you understand what I'm saying? The owner tells Kate that work commitments have meant she's had to leave Max alone for long periods of time and agrees to sign him over. Owning a dog is a massive responsibility. See you later. Come on, fella. I know. If you can't give it what it needs, don't get a dog. It's quite a simple thing. And this Whippet Cross looks like he could do with a good meal. So you can see the rib bones along here coming out, and then the spine along coming along the back. But more sort of prominent are his two hip bones here, so you shouldn't be able to see the hip bones, which are sticking out. What we're going to do is we're going to pop it to a vet and get their opinion on him, really. You can pop it. I know. I know. Go on then, fella. I know, I know, I know. Oh, let me open the door. The state of him, you've seen his bones, it wouldn't be acceptable on a person, so it's not acceptable on an animal. The dog needed to come away today, um, and, you know, fortunately, the owner's signed him over, which is in, in his best interest, but, yeah, he needs to come out today. After a long, sad wait, Max is finally going to get the attention he deserves. In 
the West Midlands, Inspector Kate Parker has rescued underweight Whippet Cross Max. Hello, gorgeous. Oh, it's so exciting, isn't it? You good boy. And brought him to be checked over by vet Ella Barchak. Hello. Oh, you're very friendly. Right, can we pop him on the table? Yeah, yeah. All right. right, so when did you yeah. find him? Uh, I found him uh, this afternoon. All oh, right. Um, so he's been with us for about an hour. OK, any problems so far? No, not at all. Dead friendly. Um, oh, yes, we like a food. Yeah, we do. he's uh, searching for food quite a lot. Well, that's no surprise, considering how skinny he is. I know. A little bit of tartar on the teeth. Right. Okay, have a little bit of lesion on the nose, but I think it's healing, so it doesn't need anything doing. He's definitely underweight. All of this white flakes, if you see now, this is because of malnutrition. The nasty dandruff could be a sign that he's not getting enough vitamins, minerals and fat from his food. And being so thin has also given Max another problem. So there's a tiny old wound on our called ulceration, mm. OK? Which Ooh. could be because it's a sticking bone there, because he's so skinny, it could be just a sore patch. Like a pressure sore type yeah, thing, exactly. so where they're on sort of harder yeah. floor. OK. To check there's no infection, Ella needs to examine his anal glands. So we're going to check his bum, all right? It's not painful, but it's not the most nice experience, OK? Well, it's all relative. So that's a chew for you. Oh, oh, you're eating fingers as well. That's OK. <laughs> A crunchy snack should come as a welcome distraction for Max. Now breathe in. OK, ready? Yeah. He doesn't mind it, really. <laughs> Just food. <laughs> right, job done? OK. So there's no infection there. It looks more like a sore place because he's so skinny. To see just how underweight Max is, he's going to have to step on the scales. Yeah, it's all right. Right. I'm excited, boy. Oh, yeah. Sit. Okay, so he's ten, ten and a half. So I would think... you say then he's um, sort of a third, probably more than a third, to put on weight. under what he should <laughs> yes, be? Yes, really. definitely. But I mean, looking how he eats, I think he's gonna gain this quite quickly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely got an appetite, isn't he? During his examination, Ella has spotted that Max has another rather intimate issue. He's um, really sticking <laughs> out all the time. Um, he's sorry, he's really penis. Right, okay. So I just need to just put it, try to put it back. It's a condition that can actually have serious consequences. Let's see what we can do here. Because he's not castrated when he's getting excited, not sexually excited, just like domination or stress, they can do that. Because you have blood vessels there who are like swelling up, that's only they can put it back, um, and then the skin is kind of trapping the blood vessels, it can't, the blood can't come back and they're just sticking out. In severe cases, the tissue of the penis can die, become infected and lead to kidney failure. Not good. OK, it's back, all right? If that's going to keep popping out, OK, the treatment is going to be castration. He needs to be castrated anyway. He'll be castrated anyway because he's starting to... He just needs to so. put on weight a little bit, but if you're going to be continuously doing this, if you notice he's drying off or anything, then general mm. lubrication, put it back, if not to the vets. Okay. So, one very personal problem solved, for now. Max also needs a worming tablet, which goes down very well. And there's no tablet anymore! You love your tablets. He's so hungry, he's eating worming tablets in the tree. Yeah. It's gonna be fine. Yeah. Just find him a nice home. Oh, we will. For active people, I think, that's gonna be yeah. the case. <laughs> yeah, no, we will. Thank you. Brilliant, all right, bye. Thank you much, bye No bye. problem, take care. Come on, then, you. I probably would say month and he's going back to normal. And he's lucky he's not mentally damaged. He is really nice, so he really have a chance to be rehomed. I wonder what's going on, don't you? But first stop for Max is the animal centre, where he'll be given a cosy bed as well as a proper meal. The vet has said that he was suffering, so he's been caused unnecessary suffering. Um, and that he's far too thin, he needs to put on a lot of weight. Um, I know, I know. And it's purely from the basis that he's not been fed. He is the friendliest dog. Um, everybody in the vet has loved him. You know, the vet has loved him. He's been so friendly. Um, and I don't think it'll take long at all to fly out of our animal centre. We'll catch up with lively little Max later. Well, that was an examination and a half for Max. While we've seen a lot of dogs that bounce back from their bad experiences, for some, the scars go more than skin deep especially if it's as frightening and traumatic as what happened to the dog in our next story.
In Lancashire, Inspector Helen Smith was involved in a distressing case that was caught on camera. We were sent a video of a male, what appeared to him chasing a dog around the back garden. You expect a bit of trust with the dog and an owner, but there's absolutely no trust there with that dog at all. The man's coming for it with a big piece of wood and the dog's petrified. The dog's absolutely nowhere to go because the garden's surrounded with a six-foot fence. It's just horrible. No matter what excuse you give to treat your dog like that, at the end of the day, the dog's terrified and it's mental torture, even if he didn't make contact with the dog with the big piece of wood. And hearing it scream and him chasing it, it's just awful. It just makes me feel sick and really angry. I think because it's on a video, you just feel so useless and helpless for that animal. You can't help it there and then. Whereas if I saw it happening in the street, I could pull over and stop it. Thankfully, Ellie, an 18-month-old dog de Bordeaux, was seized by the police and handed over to the charity. For the past few months, she's been looked after by animal care assistant Georgie Meek and the team at RSPCA Preston. And today, Helen's come to see how Ellie is doing. Good girl. Good girl, Ellie. Ready? Come on, Ellie. Come on, Ellie. There we go. Well, she does look amazing. When I brought her in, she had all her ribs showing and she was absolutely petrified. And now you're a little bit more confident, aren't you? A little bit. You're a beautiful girl. When she first arrived, she was uh, very, very nervous, very wary of new people, didn't like strangers. And when meeting someone new, she'd slink right to the floor and approach really, really slowly. So her confidence has developed so much more. She'll get used to them in a matter of minutes rather than days now. Yeah. And... Come on, then. Come on. <laughs> Come on, sweetheart. Ellie's brutal treatment from her male owner has had understandable consequences. When I first brought her in, there was a man there as well, a member of staff, and she just was flat on her stomach, really interested in him but terrified of him, and then just wanted to stick by the girls, really. She still prefers the female members of staff. Yeah. Just doing a lot of introductions to male members of staff with a female present. As long as you've got treats in your pocket, she'll, yeah. she'll, <laughs> she'll fall for anyone given time. Although Ellie's making progress, she's still wary of new faces. Yeah, see, strangers. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, sweetheart. What are you doing? Good girl. What are you doing? You're not a guard dog. Are you sending them off? Ellie will remain here until the case against her owner is resolved. He's been charged with causing her unnecessary suffering. And in the meantime, Georgie will work on building up her confidence to give her the best chance of being rehomed. Good girl. We'll be back with Ellie later. Just over 100 miles away, south of Nottingham, veteran inspector Sarah Gardner is going back to see a couple who were issued with a warning notice about their dogs. About three weeks ago, I took the two dogs to the vets, one of them relating to the treatment of its mange. The other one is a very old dog that has uh, mammary tumours that have spread and are untreatable. Initially, I gave them a week to get both of their dogs to the vets. Uh, this didn't happen, so I took the dogs to the vets for them. Hopefully they've been able to maintain the treatment that they've been given, and uh, the dogs are a lot more comfortable now. There is close to a million dogs in Britain that aren't registered with a vet. They're there for advice. Hi, Hello. Stephen, you all right? Just come to see how the dogs are doing. If your pet is overweight, if it is suffering from an allergy of some sort, you can ring them up. It, it's just vital that everybody registers their dog with a vet. Hey, Jade. Hello, darling. Ruby! Unfortunately, Staffy Cross Ruby and Black Lab Jade still haven't been registered with a vet. Hey, Jade. How are we doing? Yeah. This back tumour's changing again, isn't it? Yeah, getting bigger, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. 
Remember what I said to... Oh, crikey. <laughs> put, her, put her down. She'll be all right. She'll be all right. Remember what I said to you about Jade, though? She'll suddenly go and yes. she's got to be registered. And, you know, it... it oh. And with it being like that, I think she's coming into season again. Ruby! Uh, and that... She's all right. And that will stimulate the mammary cancer. Yeah. She's got to be registered. I can't keep leaving her here because I'm worried that she's going to suffer. As well as getting their dogs registered with a vet, they were also told to give Ruby a medicated bath every five days for her mange. It is better than it was. But one of the four bottles is still unopened. This one's got one bottle left for the bath. She shouldn't have a bottle left. If you don't do the treatment as it's meant to be done, it's not necessarily going to have worked. Well, we are doing the treatment as subscribed and as mentioned, and we haven't gave up. The owners have been mistakenly bathing Ruby every seven days instead of every five. Ruby, she should have finished her treatment by now. You've got to take that responsibility. Yeah, yeah. You, you've got to do it. That duty of care also means looking out for the dog's diet. Dogs should have an appropriate diet to their breed, to their size. You shouldn't be feeding it human food. No more Battenberg. And you definitely shouldn't be giving them sugary cakes. No, you're not getting no more Battenberg. No more, Ruby. That, that was your treat no, for the actual mum. That's mummy's now, not yours. The owners have had their chance to treat Ruby. It might be that she's still got mites. Taking her to be checked out by a vet is the only way to see if it's been enough. Yeah. Right. Ruby! I'll take this one with me. And if it's not, they may not get her back. Let me just grab the door. We're going to wee? Good girl. It's very frustrating. And it's a very simple husbandry thing that needs to be done, a bath every five days, four times, and it just hasn't been done. We'll find out if Ruby is allowed back home after the break. <laughs> also coming up... Super, super friendly. Yeah. You can't really get a friendlier dog than him. Lonely, malnourished Max has some company at last. What a difference in such a short space oh, of time. Gosh, yeah, it's <laughs> really, really good. And we meet senior citizen Labrador Ollie and his foster family. He's a lovely boy. He loves a stroke. He loves a bit of a attention. Fuss. Enough Don't fuss. You. South of Nottingham, Inspector Sarah Gardner is dealing with Staffy Cross Ruby, whose owners have been served a warning notice. Come on, sausage. There's been some confusion over how often they should have been treating her mange, and as a result, they've failed to complete the course. Come on, that's it, good girl. As they also haven't got round to registering her with a vet, Sarah's brought Ruby to be assessed by one she knows, Christine Jameson. Hello, sweetheart. Oh, hello, my friend. Yes, I know. I love you too. You're very beautiful. She's had three of the four yeah. shampoos. She certainly looks better than she did. Yeah, she does. There's definite improvement there, to say the least. Yeah, she's nowhere near as... Red and sore as she was before. But does she still have mites? <laughs> I think we school take another skin scrape. I would expect so, especially if the course hasn't been finished properly. If vet Christine believes that the owners haven't done enough, she might recommend that Ruby isn't returned to them. I'm in a bit of a quandary. The owners have done something. They've not done everything. <sighs> Ruby's condition looks to have improved, but there could still be mites on her body. And what we're doing is we're taking a layer of skin cells and then transferring them. What a good girl. Onto a microscope slide. There we are. These mites are hard to spot, so more than one scrape is needed. Oh, she's good now. Mm, she's good so good. The problem is, is if the time period between the baths is too long, then we're not getting on top of the parasite problem. 
So we need to make sure the job's done thoroughly. Ruby's previously been diagnosed with demodactic mange caused by mites that live around the hair follicles and they're only visible under a microscope. I have got a very obvious demodactic mange mite sitting right there. So they look like little carrots with legs. The treatment at the moment is not complete and we're going to need to keep these baths going for probably another two or three at least. Demodectic mange is the worst sort of mange really for dogs. It is one of the hardest ones to get rid of. The question is, can Ruby's owners be relied on to complete her treatment? Are you happy to extend a warning notice and give them another chance? I think we've got to give them another chance. So if I issue them a notice today, yep. what I'll say is on the warning notice that he must bath her tomorrow and then yep. he must keep up anything. Keep them. And keep then to if the I treatment them, regime. If, if it's not kept to this time, then things she's become, going. Yeah, they're yeah. more serious. There we are. Come on, Ruby Tuesday. Thank you. Come on then. So Ruby's going home, and her owners have been given another chance to treat her mange. I think we've given them every opportunity, and if they don't do it, then they're, they're clearly not responsible pet owners. And Ruby would be in a, a better position elsewhere. All right, shh, shh, shh. Calm down. You have your weed, you little monkey. Not the road. But it's not only Ruby that Sarah has to worry about here. The owners also have an elderly black lab named Jade who has late stage cancer. Oh, we're back. With regard to Jade, I explained to the vet that her tumour has changed yeah. and she was really very concerned that she wasn't registered at the vets. She needs, needs to be registered by Monday yeah, at the PDSA. OK. Ruby still has mites. I spoke to the vet at length about it. What she has said is if it isn't followed this time, then, you know, she would be looking yeah. to put a notice in saying that the dog's likely to suffer and, yeah. you know, we might need to take her. All right, see you later, Sausage. You're a good girl, weren't you? You were very brave. Yes, you were. Yes, you were. Well, the good news is that Ruby and Jade's owners did register them with a vet and they completed Ruby's treatment, so she's now clear of mange. Now, let's meet another fella who was in need of TLC that wasn't being provided by his owner. A few months ago, Inspector Anthony Pulfer was involved in the rescue of an elderly dog called Ollie. Ollie was quite a sad case where he was caught up in a house fire with his owner. They safely got out, but when the dog was removed from the address by the police in the fire brigade, they then discovered how much of a bad state Ollie was in. Really, what I saw in the police dog kennels was a very thin dog that I didn't think was going to make it. Curled up in a ball, every bone showing. Lots of old dogs do get some severe arthritis, but Ollie's arthritis was so severe that it even affected his jaw. And this obviously, in turn, means he couldn't eat. And this was completely missed by the dog's owner. But ultimately, the dog is starving to death almost. So he needed to be rescued. We rescued him just at the right time to then get the care that he needed. We were very lucky to have one of our RSPCA fosterers that could take on Ollie. There's very few of these fosterers in the RSPCA, but the ones we have are like gold dust and absolutely dedicated to rescuing dogs and getting them back to health. 14-year-old Ollie was signed over by his owner and is now living with veteran fosterers Liz and Gary and their dogs Emma, Samson and Delilah. He was very skinny when he first arrived, but uh, he's been fattened up. It seemed to perk up when he met our other three Labradors. Gets on with the other dogs fine. He's uh, a pleasure to foster. Golden oldie Ollie has made a great recovery thanks to daily medication for his arthritic legs and jaw. Now he's no longer in pain from his inflamed joints, he's able to open his mouth and eat normally again. He's put some weight on and he's 
probably the ideal weight. He's the oldest dog we fostered and probably the easiest. He's a lovely boy. Certainly recommend fostering to someone who has got a bit of time. I don't think you really need any special qualifications other than to love dogs, really. Good boy. The pain relief has also made daily walks a lot easier for Ollie. It would be really nice if he could find someone who would get as much out of owning a dog like Ollie as we do fostering him. Good boy. Ollie's rescuer, Anthony, is dropping by to see how the old chap is getting on. Hi, Liz and Gary, how are you? Hello. Anthony. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Sure. Hello, Ollie. God, he looks amazing. Would you believe it, eh? God, it's been a couple of months since I've seen him. He has put on a lot of weight. <laughs> Not too uh, much, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> I think when I met Ollie, I think I could put my hands round his waist, right yeah. round and join, so he's, the coverage is amazing there. Once emaciated and close to starving, Ollie's now looking much healthier and happier. I appreciate what fosterers do and, you know, the work it takes to get a dog back to full health like this. So I really appreciate what you've done for Ollie and hopefully him here will have a happier rest of his life and uh, hopefully we'll try and find him a new home. Absolutely. Well, you know, you know where we are for the next one after oh. you found him a new home. <laughs> yeah, we're more than happy to, to take another. That's one dedicated fosterer right there. If he stays with Liz and Gary or gets a new home, Ollie's twilight years should be happy ones from now on. OK, that Ollie, I'm going to get back to work. <clears throat> yeah, good boy. Yeah. This is why I do my job, to come and see people like Liz and Gary who put all that hard work into getting the dog back to health. They're the dog rescuers, but hopefully now Ollie will go on, live the rest of his days as a healthy dog. Ultimately, that's just what I want, and I'm really chuffed. As you've just seen, fosterers play a vital role in caring for dogs that just wouldn't do well in kennels, and they're in short supply. So I'm meeting Simon McArdle, a supervisor at Laybourne Animal Centre, to find out more about what makes a suitable fosterer. So, Simon, there's a demand for foster carers, is there? Yeah, definitely. What are you looking for in a fosterer? Mostly someone with a lot of time, really. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we need uh, people who are going to be home most of the day with these dogs, um, because you know, they're the kind of dogs you know, that um, we're looking to put out to foster homes. Um, you know, they're going to need quite a lot of time, care and attention. Are they the kind of dogs that sometimes struggle in the kennels environment? Yeah, so you're generally going to be having dogs that yeah, maybe aren't coping well with, with kennels, find it quite stressful. Um, you may have dogs that are either very old or very young, or maybe you know, even a, a dog who's part of an ongoing case, so maybe in kennels for months and months and months on end, you know, it's going to be far better off in a foster home. If you were to be a, a foster, how long would you expect to have a dog for? It completely varies, to be honest. If someone was having um, their puppies, they would foster them until they were old enough to be up for rehoming. If it's a case dog, um, it's up until you know that case comes to an end. Um, so you know, those things, they can really stretch out for a long period of time. Yeah, it can be a very long yeah. time, yeah. And this is your one. You took this one home. Were yeah. you supposed to be fostering and then couldn't give him back? Is that what happened? No, he was. He would have been um, a potentially good um, good choice for foster here because he was a case dog initially. Unfortunately, his case concluded pretty quickly. Um, and uh, once he was uh, kind of signed over looking for a home, I was on the lookout for a dog myself at the time. So he was uh, a perfect fit. Good for you. <laughs> good for him. It's very good for him, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dex, <laughs> come with me. <laughs> <laughs> He probably would as well. He would. <laughs> he would. He would. had a biscuit. Yeah. <laughs> now it's back to our doggy in the window. Hey, hey, Bella. Earlier we met Max. It is thin. You can see the spine sort of coming all along the top and onto his onto his tail as well. The skinny whippet cross, whose life had been lacking when it came to company and food. The state of him wouldn't be acceptable to a person, so it's not acceptable to an animal. It's been almost a month since the two-year-old was rescued by Inspector Kate Parker, and she's keen to see how he's been getting on at Gonsal Farm Animal Centre near Shrewsbury. I'm expecting him to have put on a considerable amount of weight over the last few weeks because um, he's been, had, you know, he's had a suitable diet. Um, so it'll be good to see, you know, him without bones protruding and, you know, as a proper dog should be. Hello. <laughs> 
<laughs> hello, you. Oh, hello. Hello. I'm dirty. Max seems overjoyed to see Kate, to say the least. Thanks to the staff here, including animal care assistant Dawn Bisbee, it seems this little fella has a definite spring in his step and a posh new red coat. <laughs> Very playful, then. Super, super friendly. Yeah. You can't really get a friendlier dog than him. He just <laughs> loves people. Bless him. Fantastic. And how's his weight come on? Because he was quite underweight when we brought him in, wasn't he? Was, he was, yeah. He's, he's gaining weight. He's doing it nicely, steadily. So, yeah, yeah. he's looking brilliant now. So. Good. And he's got his coat. He has, yeah. What, just to protect him just from the cold, because, say, he's still not to the ideal weight yet. To see just how well Max is doing, Kate's going to have a look underneath that coat. Should we take your coat off, shall we? You've got your clean coat. Ooh. It's all a game to this lovable lad. Just oh, look at that God. tail go. What a difference in such a short space oh, of time. Gosh, yeah, it's Ooh. really, really good. <laughs> Completely different dog. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> look He's at looking him. really, really yeah. good now. He's certainly a far cry from the skinny dog that was rescued four weeks ago. So when I brought him in, he had a wound on his back end um, and it was from where his hip bone had been sticking out so much that he'd been sat on it and it oh. caused a pressure sore. Um, so... <laughs> yes, so it's good to see that it's completely gone. Yes, definitely, mm -hmm. definitely. He is such a happy dog. <laughs> and since Happy Max has arrived here, he's got himself a new hobby. Come on, then. Playing with his ball. <laughs> Thank you. Leave it. Good boy. We'll sit. There's a good boy. You're back. Yes. We can hear you. Leave it. Good boy. You sit. Good boy. The clever lad seems to have mastered multitasking, fetching the ball and barking at the same time. I think his barking's going to be a thing, isn't it? Ready? You're going to make a noise. Oh, there we go. <laughs> He's like a ventriloquist. Well, this vocal chappy is certainly full of life, which bodes well for finding his forever home. Definitely ball home. Mm. Come on, then. He's a lovely dog, very sociable, loves people, which is surprising, really, because his, his previous home, where, where I picked him up from, um, he was left for long, long periods of time with no human interaction, no, no toys, no nothing. So to see him now playing with toys and interacting with people was great. We'll see how Max's search for a new home goes later. Also coming up, she was terrorised by her owner, but Ellie's learning to trust again. She's absolutely incredible. She's the most loving dog I've worked with. And if you need a rescue dog in your life, stay tuned, it could be your lucky day. <coughs> Earlier, we met Max, the sad and underweight doggy in the window, left home alone by his owner. That dog cannot stay in the house. It's far too thin, his bones are sticking out of his bag. When Inspector Kate Parker rescued him, he was so ravenous, he scoffed down a worming tablet as if it was his favourite chicken dinner. He's so hungry, he's eating worming tablets in the treat. Yeah. His owner agreed to sign him over and was given a written caution. Now, four months on, this lively lad couldn't have made himself any more at home. <laughs> With his new owners, Sheila and Rob Miller. Comfy there, Max? I think there was a dog-shaped hole in the family. We saw his picture on the RSPCA website. I think it was just one of those love at first sight things, I guess. I'm glad we made a decision to find a dog, and uh, I'm glad it was Max. He makes us laugh all the time. When he's playing, he, he tends to walk around with his toys in his mouth trying to bark. Still working on the act? Yeah. Lovely quite noise. Funny. <laughs> makes everyone laugh. Just seem a happy, healthy dog. When dogs are happy, they wipe their tail, don't they? And he's got a very waggy tail. <laughs> and this cheerful chap has another talent too. I think he's half kangaroo. <laughs> Definitely think he's half kangaroo. I didn't expect that he would be able to get on the kitchen worktops, but he can. He can jump on them in one fell swoop. Oh, there you go. Ready on. And he was very pleased the day he showed me that he could do that the first time. Seems old habits die hard for Max. 
very, very curious about the world and, you know, what's out there. But he's not left sitting home alone these days. Do you want to go for a walk? Do you? OK, let's get your lead, Max. And this one. And when it's time for walkies, the whole family go along. Yeah, we're coming, Max, we're coming. Max likes coming here. It's one of his favourite things, chasing the ball on the field. Sit. Ready. Go. Come on, Max. Oh, Max's got a lovely nature. Nice and energetic, though. It's a lovely looking dog, isn't he? It's great to bring him out here and where he can burn off his energy. He enjoys himself here, and he's always tired out after half an hour on the field with the ball. That's a good boy. Back at home, Max always remembers to wipe his paws on the way in. Well, with a bit of help from Sharon and Rob's daughter, Bryony. Then he can go on the sofa, can't you? Coming in? But maybe not the worktop this time. First, though, time for some well-earned grub. Good boy. Can you sit? Max loves his food. Thanks to regular meals, he's now up to his ideal weight. Put on about a kilogram while he's been with us. And that was a good boy, wasn't it? Did you enjoy that? You like your turkey and rice, don't you? Well, pizza worming tablet. He's a good boy. Happy boy. Full belly. Been chasing the ball for ages. Nice walk. Very lovable. Oh. Tiring work being so adored, right, Max? And you can hear him starting to snore now. What more could a dog want, eh? It's the happy ending Max truly deserves. Bless him. Remember 18 month old Ellie, who was chased around the garden by her owner? He claimed he was trying to train her as a guard dog by emulating a technique he'd seen online. He admitted causing her unnecessary suffering by using threatening behaviour and was banned from keeping dogs for 12 months. Ellie was signed over, but had been left terrified of men. Yeah, see, strangers. Good girl. Good girl, she up. Ready, go in. Ready, go in. She's still at RSPCA Preston under the care of Georgie and the behavioural team. It's been a month since we last saw her. Where you go? and Ellie has made something of a breakthrough. She really comes out of a shell once she gets used to you, but initially she'll sort of see a guy and keeps a distance until she's sussed them out, really. And once she realises that they are going to be nice to her, she'll be nice to them in return. <laughs> Animal care assistant Alex has seen the brave girl's improvement firsthand. When I was first approaching her, she was very nervous. All I did was reduce how I stood, so I lowered my stance so I wasn't crowding over her. I talked to her in a soft voice. Spent a bit of time with her and then she warmed up to the idea that I might be an all right person. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Ellie. Once she gets to know you and once she's got your trust, then she's absolutely incredible. She's the most loving dog I've worked with. Just wants cuddles all the time. <laughs> I want her. <laughs> she just needs a home with someone that's going to love her and give her the time she needs to come out of her shell. I'll be really sad to see her go. Oh, yeah, I love this dog so much. Well, shortly after filming, Ellie did find her new home and with a male owner, Martin Hickson, and his wife, Angela. What a great result for Georgie and the team at Preston. Good girl. And what news of 14-year-old Ollie, the fostered Labrador cross? Well, hot off the press, he's gone and found himself a new forever home too. And here he is with his new family. Good on you, boy. As you've seen in the programme, many rescue dogs don't have the best start in life. But that doesn't mean that they can't make incredible pets. The RSPCA care for thousands of them. And there's often lots of work that needs to be done to get them ready for rehoming. And here's just one of the wonderful dogs they've been looking after. This is Crystal. She's eight years old and a Staffordshire Bull Terrier crossbreed. She's been at Block Fen for eight months now. You're just an angel, aren't you? 
she was abandoned, so it's really hard for us to know where she was, what she was doing, what she loved, did she have a family. <coughs> She's been here for so long. She's been so patient. The person who gives Crystal that chance will be the luckiest person in the world. Crystal is a fun, intelligent, sit down, good girl, loving, cheeky girl who will completely lighten up your life. She's looking for a home where she will be the only animal. I can't preach enough that whoever gives her that chance, they won't need another animal because she will make your house into a home. They will have a one in a million dog, they really will. It's a good girl. So, if you're looking for a four-legged best friend in your life, remember to make your local rescue centre your first stop, where you'll find plenty of deserving candidates desperate to brighten up your home. Next time on The Dog Rescuers. It's OK. An anxious German shepherd rescued after being mistreated by his owner. We need to just get him checked over by the vet to make sure he's OK. Two-week-old puppies covered in fleas. Inspector Jackie Miller gets to them in the nick of time. They have got a lot of fleas that can kill them. And we're back with our rescued spaniel, Ted, as he embarks on sniffer dog training. So we can see the anticipation, can't we? Good. But does he have what it takes to make the grade? <laughs>